Welcome to Michigan's World War I Centennial News Report for April 2014. I'm your host, Dennis Skupinski. During this program, we're going to examine Kalamazoo County, the soldiers and sailors and nurses who served during the war, and also those who fought on the home front in various organizations, which we will discuss later on through this program. This program is dedicated to the men and women of Kalamazoo County who offer their lives in humanity's defense in the great war of the nations, especially those who gave their last full measure of devotion. And now, World War I Centennial National News Update. On Saturday, June 14th, from 1.30 to 5 p.m. in Washington, D.C., a World War I Centennial Convention and Trade Fair will be held. If you're interested, please RSVP to the address listed on the bottom of this flyer, or do a search online for it. Honor Row of Kalamazoo County gives us a history of what went on in Kalamazoo County. The soldiers, sailors, and nurses who served in, in the armed forces during the war, and also what went on in the home front. In 1920, Mrs. O. H. Clark, publisher, copyrighted this book, Honor Row of Kalamazoo County. Kalamazoo County pays tribute to its great leaders, President Woodrow Wilson, Commanding General John J. Pershing, Allied Commanding General Ferdinand Foch, and Michigan's Governor Albert E. Sleeper. First, we pay tribute to the Gold Star Boys, those who gave the ultimate sacrifice during the war. The highest ranking one was Colonel Joseph B. Westnage, commander of the 126th Infantry Regiment, 32nd Division. He died November 29, 1918. Next, we pay tribute to those men and women who served in armed forces during the Great War. In Kalamazoo County, over 30 women served in a nursing corps, some of them overseas and some in the United States. One of them, Emma A. Arnold, served with Base Hospital 36, which is from Detroit, it was based out of Detroit's College of Medicine and Surgery, which is now Wayne State University Medical School. The next section was the Student Army Training Corps. This produced junior officers and also technical specialists for the military. Previous to April 1st, 1917, there were in Kalamazoo County 13 members of the American Red Cross. These were affiliated with the national organization. Early in the month of April, when America's entrance into the European war seemed inevitable, the matter of organizing a local chapter was discussed in many community groups. Following an appeal by the Honorable John W. Adams of the Kalamazoo Rotary Club, a meeting was called at the Chamber of Commerce, April 4, 1917, for the purpose of organizing a chapter. The name Liberty Loan applies to the five great loans placed among the American people by popular subscription under the different bond acts passed by Congress during the years of war. The first loan was May 1917. 
with a record $11.3 million loaned to the United States government to prosecute the great war that liberty might be preserved, Kalamazoo County may always be proud that it helped Michigan place second in the list of states in the support of government's call for money. The Board of Appeals had under its jurisdiction nearly 60,000 registered men and 11 different draft boards. The board had the final say upon every appeal case from these various local boards and also original jurisdiction over all occupational, industrial, and agricultural exemptions claimed. The Medical Advisory Board is made up of local physicians who specialize in different lines of medicine. It was hoped that this board would eliminate a number of men who would be rejected at the camps because of physical disabilities. This staff, because of their expertise, were able to do more exhaustive research and to determine whether a soldier would be fit or not for duty. The legal advisory board is made up of local lawyers who help soldiers with all legal issues, such as war risk insurance, allotments for sailors and soldiers, family allowances, the provision of soldiers and sailors civil rights acts were explained to them, and the legal rights and personal affairs of those entering military service were cared for and protected by this group. Under the Selective Service Act, May 18, 1917, the men of Kalamazoo County registered for military service during the years of war that the manpower of a nation might be used to the best possible advantage and that the essential industries may not be crippled and yet the government be furnished with its country's quota of fighting men was the great responsibility placed upon the draft boards of the country. The Armory Board of Control was responsible for maintaining the county armory, also provided additional funds for soldiers going overseas, and in 1916 it provided additional funds for Michigan National Guardsmen who served along the Mexican border. The War Camp Community Service was to make Kalamazoo feel like home to the soldiers, sailors, and Marines in the area. They bought a store downtown Kalamazoo and named it the Red Circle Club, taking as its sign the insignia of the service which provided these facilities. At the Red Circle Club, there were concerts, dances, and other enjoyable entertainments provided to the soldiers at no charge. The purpose of the Navy League was to promote the interest in our Navy and Merchant Marines. Upon declaration of war, the Navy League provided soldiers and sailors with sweaters, wristlets, helmets, and two pairs of socks besides their issued uniform. The Kalamazoo County Patriotic League was an umbrella organization that did fundraising for the numerous war relief agencies that were dependent upon voluntary gifts and subscriptions. They collected the money and divided it among the various groups that needed it. The Lucinda Hillsdale Stone Chapter Daughters of the American Revolution began war service many months before the United States went to war. By contributing to the Belgium Relief Fund and by doing Red Cross work at various homes, they also provided a hospitality room in Kalamazoo. War Mothers of America the American mother gave her sons with the undaunted courage of a Spartan mother. The desire to give herself found expression in the birth of an organization of war mothers. Organizations were formed in nearly every state of the Union, and some of them as early as 1917. They worked closely with the Red Cross, Council of Defense, and other bodies of government workers in a great task of defending the oppressed. The aims of the Food Administration were threefold. First, to guide the trade in the fundamental food commodities and to eliminate the vicious speculation, extortion, and wasteful practices and stabilize prices in the essential staples. Second, it was to guard our own food export so that we did not have a shortage in the United States. The third was to stimulate every manner within our power the production and savings of food in order that we may increase exports to our allies to a point which would enable them to properly provision their armies and feed their peoples during a war. The Knights of Columbus was a social organization that its members invited soldiers to their homes on Sundays and holidays. They also presented to the 126th Regiment of Infantry, Michigan National Guard, a set of full regimental colors.
The American Fund for French Wounded was one of the big relief committees in the county during the war period. It aided the wounded and refugees in stricken France and Belgium. The YMCA provided soldiers who were returning home a place to stay, a place to take a bath, and also helped them find jobs. It also provided them stationery so they could write their loved ones. The YWCA, besides providing a hostess house for relatives and friends of soldiers, also trained young women to fill men's jobs as they left for war. When the call came for all women to cooperate in the various fields of labor, about 70 loyal women representing the Daughters of Veterans formed a Star Service Club to do war work, such as knitting, sewing, helping the Red Cross, and other various relief organizations. The Four Minute Men and Women was a group organized to speak in theaters and other public gatherings. They talked about various topics of the war. No speech was longer than four minutes, and this was designed by the U.S. government to keep the American citizens involved and also informed of what was going on in the war and what sacrifices they could do to help win the war.